Hello all, warm greetings to everyone. I'm so glad to meet you all again on the second episode of Data Dictionary, uh, where we will be diving deep into the domain concepts of data element. Let's jump into the definition of the domain first. So domain, domain is called as one of the fundamental element in our data dictionary. And this gives us a basic definition to a field. So when I say a fundamental definition of a field, what are all the different attributes that contribute towards this fundamental definition? So these fundamental attributes are data type, length, uh, value range, and fixed values. So all these four fundamental attributes like data type, length, value range, and fixed values contribute towards the fundamental attributes which defines the field and thus domain serves as the fundamental definition of a field. Now before we seeing all these fundamental attributes, I would like to introduce one of the basic tables as part of this domain. This tables, there are two tables in specific. One is DD01L, which helps us in letting us know all the domains that are present as part of the system. And it also possesses all the values, like the characteristics of the domain, like what data type is being used, uh, what is the case that has been set, what is the routine that is used, who created it, when it was created, time, etc. All those details. And the second table is DD01T, which is called as a text table. This will give the short description that are maintained as part of the domain. So this table becomes very handy whenever you wanted to search for a particular domain whose name you don't know and you know the description alone you can directly come to this table provide the pattern and search for the particular i mean when i say pattern i meant in the long text you can just type in whatever pat what is the description you wanted to look for for example i'll type in here as customer uh, sorry this is e um here yes here i can just type in as customer and i can press f8 so all all the description that matches my pattern that I've given in the front screen will come here. Through this, we can avoid a maximum detour in finding out the domains that we wanted to. Now, let us check one of the standard uh, domain. For example, take in case of this domain. This is KUNNR. Uh, SAP has created it at this date. The package, the original language that was, it was created. Of course, it will be translated into multiple languages. And then moving ahead to the definition tab. So this definition tab is the most important part of the domain where you will define the data types that is used as part of this uh, domain. Uh, let me get you to one of the custom domain that I created. For example, consider this custom domain. I have given a character okay, as the data type and I've given the number of characters as 10. So the maximum amount of values that this domain can hold is 10 whose data type will be character. Now, as soon as I have mentioned it as character, you could find that my decimal places field is grayed out. My sign field is grayed out. Why? Because my character data type will not be having any decimal places. Of course, it's a character data type. And there is no positive and negativity concept in case of a data type for character data type. So these fields get automatically enabled when I have a relevant data type assigned for them. For example, Whenever I assign KCUAR, which is a currency data type, you can find the decimal places enabled and it is defaulted itself with two and you can find the sign tab enabled as well. So the sign tab basically indicates whether a positive and negative value is applicable for this data type. So if I check this, it means both a positive and negative value is applicable for it. If I uncheck it, it doesn't matter. You can just store the value, whatever it is, and it gets stored in the database table. And similarly, the case sensitive, if you see now it has got disabled. So what is this case sensitive field has to do with the data type? So this case sensitivity is mostly rele relevant for the characters, uh, character data types. For example, when I type in here as care and I try to activate it, you see the case sensitive field has got itself enabled. So it's like when I check this checkbox, it means that whenever I enter a character or for a field that holds this as a domain so whatever irrespective whatever case uh, characters i enter my table will be holding the same cases for example if i type t in capital letter e in small letter s in small and t in small 
my database table will also hold the same value. Whereas if I don't check this, irrespective of the cases that I enter, they always get stored as a upper caps letter. We will get into this. We will check an example for this with the table we have in hand. So data type will you can define all the data types. I mean any of the data types that are present as part of uh, this SAP functionalities. Yes, and then you can define the number of characters you would like to display. So in case of currency or in case of quantity fields, you will have the decimal places enabled. You can have that. And this output length is basically what is the number of characters that you want to you want the field that holds this data element to be displayed. It basically defines the output length characteristics that will be displayed as part of any report that is using this domain. And this routine is another concept. It's like, for, for example, there is a routine called alpha. Now, what does this alpha routine does? So basically, this routine helps us in converting the external values that are fed into a table to internal values before it gets stored into the table. Because for SAP to hold the data, it must follow a certain standards. It can't hold or it can't store the data in a raw format. It has to convert into its own accept, acceptable format so that it can be later used for any of the reports or processings further. So whatever values we enter will always get converted into an internal format and it gets stored into the database table. Similarly, the internal format need not be an understandable format for us. So when we are retrieving that for an external report or something, we need to again apply this conversion parameter wherein the internal format will get converted into an external format and it gets displayed in a more relevant format to the outside world. So if you want to know more about this conversion routine, double click that. You will find the different function modules that are used for this particular conversion routine. I indicates the internal format, O indicates the external format, input indicates the internal format and output indicates the external format. So this is what, in short, the conversion routine helps us in converting the values from an internal and external format and vice versa. We will see more about this in the coming episodes. But for now, this fundamental knowledge is enough. Now, talking about this case sensitive, let me take to you, I take you an example. Like for example, uh, see this is a KNA1 table. If you see here, there is a field called name1. If I get into the domain of this particular name, uh, the domain is called as name. If you get into there, you see the case sensitive is checked. Now let's get back. Let's check another field. It's called search term. If you get into this domain, you will find the case sensitive field is not checked. Now let me try to display the values of these two tape fields. When I display, if you see here, see, this is the case sensitive checked domain, wherein all the values that has been typed is getting stored in the same format, be it uppercase or lowercase, the format is same. Now in case of here, which is a case insensitive field, all the characters that has been typed get stored in the back end as a capital letter. In, in other words, it gets stored as an uppercase. So this is what I was telling about these two characters. I mean, these two parameters, the sign, sorry, uh, these case sensitive and case insensitive values. So this is how it uh, contributes uh, to why it's the field that uses this domain. So let's get back to our slide. So here we have covered the data type, the length, yeah, value ranges is another important concept. Now, for example, consider this. Uh, okay, here you don't have any value ranges assigned to it. Rather, okay, first of all, we will see what this value range is. So this value range is something which uh, helps the fields that use this particular domain uh, or the data types that is, um, which uses this particular domain. Whenever it is used in the program, it helps us in promoting values that can be part of the field it does not provide you any validation at all it does not helps you with any validation like for example you it doesn't restrict you from entering any other value rather it just suggests the values that can be part of this field we will get to know more about it when we see the example if you take in case of here you i mean uh, okay let us just get into our custom uh, domain that we created so this is a value range here you have Fixed values. In fixed values, I can maintain any value here I wanted to. For example, I'm maintaining test 1 and here let me enter 10. So let me enter 1 here and here let me enter 10. So here I'll put it as test 2. So for me, I'm 
I'm planning to have these two as a fixed values. Okay, let us let us put it into a program and we will explain. Uh, before that, I'll also run through the other two uh, data elements, standard data elements. So here in the value ranges, there are three ways through which you can uh, you can make use of this uh, values that needs to be displayed as part of the domain. For example, uh, basically this is only for the F4. When you press an F4 on a field, you get displayed with certain values. So these values usually comes from the three options that we have here. Option one is fixed values, which is a single values. Option two is intervals. And option three is the value table. Okay, in case of here, this KUNN domain, we have only the value table defined. I will take you through to another data element, which is ABSDT. Here, value, single values are defined. Okay, now we will try to apply this in a program. I have created a domain, I mean test program, just to understand the domain concepts. The first field is having KUNNR, the second field is having ABSTT, and the third field is having our custom domain. Now when I execute, you will have all these three fields. Now for example, see when I press F4 on this particular KUNNR field, you will have a search help opened up. So what is the search help? Uh, where does it come from? The search help is basically coming from the data element that is using this domain. So in our first episode, we saw search help can be assigned to data elements. So this is one of a collective search help that has been assigned to the data element. Now, uh, let us hear these are all different values, wherein like uh, I mean different search criteria parameters through which you can search the required customers. For example, I'm entering a postal code of 61176 and I'm starting search. So all these three values are coming from the KNA1 table, which we saw few minutes before. Right, so this KNA1 is a table which is being assigned as a value table for this particular domain. So, hence, when you press F4, you are getting the customers from KNA1 table. Now, move, let's move on to the second field. So, this is a field which holds only the fixed values. Right now, if you press F4 here, you will see the same fixed values what has been defined here comes right. Now, the third one, the special one, the custom field, custom domain that we created. Now, when I press F4, you see the same fixed value that I have defined here. So, I have defined 1 and I have defined 10. So, you can see the same. Now, what I will do here, I will start defining certain limits. For example, I will put a lower limit as 1 and I will put an upper limit as 10. Now, if I activate, you should get an error. See, you get an error. Why? Because I have, if you see here, fixed value lower limit 1 reoccurs. That's because I have already defined 1 and 10 as my fixed values. Now, when I put a range or an interval from 1 to 10, it's like I'm defining this 1 and 10 in two times because 1 and 10 both is also part of this interval. So, I can just put it as 2 and say I'm putting it as 10. Even now, I think there will be a warning for us. Let's see. Again, there is an error. It's like lower fixed limit value is 2 and upper fixed limit value is 11. So what happens here is I have already given an interval of 2, but here I have given a fixed value of 1, which is contradictory, right? So let me change the definition. I'll give fixed value as 2 and I'll give lower limit as 1. Now I think it should accept it. Yes. And you have a mere warning. When you check fixed value 10 is within the range, of course, because you have 10 here already and still it's also part of this interval as well, which is not an error, but still a warning, which politely system tells you that you are using a value being part of two intervals. I mean, two places, both single values and in intervals. Now let us play around with our F4 help on the custom field. When I press F4, see, you can see here my two fixed values. And then you have my intervals here as well, right? Now let us do another thing. Let's play, play around another concept as well. Let me define a value table here as well, okay? Uh, K and A1. Now when I activate, it gets activated, right? Which does mean that uh, you get a small warning here because this particular domain is not part of the key field in this particular table, K and A1. That's fine because when you go to K and A1, the key field here is KUNNR. This KUNNR is not using our custom element as the domain. That's the reason you are getting the warning, which is totally fine. But now, 
you have all three defined you have the value table defined you have the intervals defined and you have the single values defined as well now let's see what's my f4 help does when i press f4 you will still find the fixed values and the intervals that i've defined gets displayed so from this what you can understand is my single values and the intervals takes precedence over our value table let me reiterate this point all these fixed values intervals and value table will help in proposing values for you rather than it does not validate the values that i enter for example here the values is 1 and 11 1 to 11 so if i press here at 19 also the system does not throw any error it does not restrict you from ending from entering any other value the validation is completely a different concept we will see it in our later videos of course i'll definitely cover that point as well but for now you can just consider the value table the fixed values and the range i mean intervals all three part of the fixed values only helps in proposing the values for us now one last point about deleting the domain for example this is a domain and this domain is of course used as part of a data element that's the reason this whatever i was in here is a data element right so this data element is using this domain now when i go and try delete this data element i mean this domain it does not delete it gives me an error it says due to use in dictionary objects the deletion cannot be performed so deletion is not as simple as you think you must ensure the domain is not in use with any other data dictionary component so what i will do i will go to this particular data element i will remove this domain uh, let me get to the change mode i will remove this domain i'll put a different domain i'll activate it now i'll come back i'll try to delete it it gets deleted easily yes so even the deletion is subject to a lot of validations at the back end only if the domain is free from any other data dictionary element it is allowed to get deleted so we'll run through the slide again so we have seen what is the data type length value range fixed values we have introduced with two new tables we have seen what is conversion routines i have run through what is the sign lower case i mean it's basically the case sensitive field that we discussed then we have seen in detail about fixed values and ranges and value table and we have seen what deletion of a domain means in the next video we will be discussing about the domains and data elements in the same video as in we'll be comparing both domains and data elements in our first episode we have seen what is data elements we have dive deep into it now we have seen what is domain now let's compare these two in our next video and i will also let you know when is domain needed and when is data element needed we'll discuss in detail in the next video thank you all for your time i hope you like this video do subscribe the channel because i'm planning to introduce a series of chronological videos covering sap technical concepts in abap hana and in few functional concepts as well thank you again wish you all peace and blessings